What's up, y'all? It's me. It's your boy, Asmongold, and today I'm on to PTR, and I wanted to show you guys some of the new changes that are being planned for Prot Warriors in patch 7.1.5. One thing I want to say right now, though, is that this is on the PTR, the public test realm, so if you don't like what you see, make sure to let Blizzard know. They've already made a couple of iterations on the original changes, so they have, I think, been responding to feedback, so either way, you want to at least give it a chance, because if it actually goes to live, the chances of it being changed are of course probably pretty much zero so anyway guys the main changes that are being made here are with the spells okay so you've got three main changes with your spells the first spell that's being changed is focus rage focus rage is being changed by being removed from the spell book you don't have it focus rage is gone uh too many apms too many apms can't have it anymore that's what they've been doing in a lot of classes and it seems to me like they don't really want to have any abilities that are off the gcd in rotations anymore so it's not a surprise that they're getting their focus rage also the second ability that's being changed a lot is revenge revenge used to give you like five or six rage now it costs 30 rage if you dodge or parry instead of resetting the cooldown it actually reduces that rage cost down to zero and the cooldown is reduced by haste and it's actually a very very fast cooldown you can use it about every two or three GCDs depending on your haste. Thunderclap is basically the new revenge. Thunderclap can be used single target now because it generates five rage and it's pretty much for all intents and purposes a longer range 360 degree uh, revenge. Now for the, the, I guess the current iteration of revenge in 7.1. So um, those two abilities, like the revenge ability also, I forgot to mention, does a fuckload of damage. Like, it's actually insane how much damage you can do with revenge and Thunderclap and, uh, and revenge on top of Devastate now also have a chance to reset the cooldown on shield slam now let's go ahead and just get into the tldr right now right before we get into the talents this is going to reduce your aoe it's going to increase your aoe damage by a ton and it's going to reduce your single target damage unless you have a couple of like really kind of weird items like the prot warrior gloves so we're going to look at the talents here now the 45 talents of the first row that's changed um ultimatum has been replaced with best serve cold and best serve cold basically makes your revenge do five percent more damage per target that you hit up to five targets as you can see so it does 25 percent more damage if you're fighting in like an aoe like a mythic plus or something like that that's very useful and i think that honestly guys like that's going to be the go-to talent for mythic plus crackling thunder got cut in half i really i i, I didn't know that was op but apparently it is um, the 75 talents also got changed in a lot of ways. The big one, the big change here that most people are talking about is the 75 talent Devastator. Now, Devastator basically takes Devastate. You no longer have Devastate as an ability, and every auto attack basically does a Devastate. It does the amount of damage of a Devastate, gives you 5 Rage, and has a chance to reset the cooldown on Shield Slam. So this is very similar to the Demon Hunter ability, I think, called Chaos Blade, but I'm not quite sure. I haven't played my Demon Hunter for a while. Never Surrender i believe has gotten buffed up to 100 percent and indomitable stays the same so devastator is very very good for damage um never surrender could be pretty good for like fighting like a mythic plus 15 tyrannical boss or something like that but indomitable uh, with my gear is going to be giving me almost a million extra health Personally, I think that they should remove Indomitable and bake it into the spec because it just seems like it's too powerful and too appealing of a choice for too many players for it to actually be, uh, for it to, there to be really any competition between the other two. Now, the next row uh, is pretty much the same. Uh, Booming Voice is pretty much unchanged. I think it goes up to 25% instead of 20. Into the Fray is exactly the same as far as I know. And Vengeance, instead of working with, um, uh, what do you call it, Focus Rage, because that one's gone, it now works with Revenge, which is, uh, I think, kind of like an interesting mechanic because you're going to be using Revenge as many times as you can because of how much damage it deals. It's pretty much your highest damage ability, basically. So I think that you're going to be using Vengeance a little bit more but the main difference between Focus Rage and Revenge, on top of like obviously the main abilities, is that Focus Rage was not on the GCD and Revenge is. So that makes makes things a little bit different. And the 100 talents are also pretty much the same. So anyway, guys, the Devastator talent is probably the most interesting one in here. And so what I've heard people talking about is that Devastator is very, very good if you are not really taking a ton of damage, but you want to be able to deal a lot more damage. So right now on live, Prot Warriors are about second or third for single target DPS. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, prop Paladins are, are by far probably the best single target DPS tanks in the game. Guardian Druids might be a couple percentages ahead of Prot Warrior, but for the most part, Prot Warrior and Guardian Druids are pretty much equal. So Prot Warrior is in a pretty good place in terms of single target damage, and it's AoE and multi-target damage outside of Naltharian's Fury if you have a lot of mastery. It is very, very kind of minimal. So they're buffing the AoE damage of Prot Warriors by such a huge amount. I, I will be very surprised if I'm not going to be doing somewhere around, I'm trying to think of like what now, I don't want to be crazy or anything about that, like 20 to 30% more damage on AoE pulls just because of how powerful Revenge is going to be. Now, I'm going to do a couple of AoE pulls, and I couldn't really get into a dungeon group or anything on the PTR, but I'm going to do a couple of them in Suramar with a lot of the elite mobs, and then I'll do the same pull on live, and obviously there's going to be tiny little differences, but it's going to be basically the same thing, so you guys can see the difference between the different specs. Now, I'm taking this guy right here, and as you can see, I think that one of the big changes here is that you don't really deal nearly as much damage. Whenever I'm fighting a target demi on live, I'm doing closer to 200k DPS, not like 160 or something like that and I'm obviously not playing very well because I'm just learning the spec right now but at the same time I'm also using DPS trinkets that I don't normally use so I do feel like Prot Warrior single target damage is being nerfed by a pretty considerable amount now if you have the Prot Warrior legendary gloves that can maybe offset it but at the same time, I don't really know if that's going to really give Prot Warriors the same amount of, uh, of damage that they had beforehand. And also, you lose such a huge amount of survivability. Because even if you're not going with Indomitable, that increases your maximum health by 25% and your maximum Ignore Pain by 25%, you could also go with um, a Never Surrender, which increases your Ignore Pain by up to 100% based on the amount of health that you're missing. So, I mean, just imagine, that's like twice as much, right? So it's a huge amount, and I would say that honestly, just those two things right there are going to hurt Prot Warriors a lot in terms of single target damage. Now, in terms of survivability, it is going to be changed a little bit because, uh, because um, what do you call it, Focus Rage was on the GCD, you could pretty much do a Focus Rage inside one of your other abilities, and then on the next, I like, guess, like, internal GCD, you could use... Um, what do you call it? You could use Ignore Pain, and then you have the Ignore Pain that was reduced in healing, or not healing, the Rage Cost, because you had the Vengeance Talent, right? But you're not able to do that because uh, Revenge is now on the GCD. Well, it's not. It always has been on the GCD, but now it's kind of taking the place of Focus Rage, and Focus Rage wasn't on the GCD, and Revenge is. So it's going to make GCDs a little bit more tight for Prot Warriors in terms of being able to maximize things. Uh, I think that in terms of damage, and this is like, I'm just going to be rounding things up on this uh, this pull, going into the house and, and damaging them all down. And this right here is on the PTR, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second here. So you guys are about to see how much damage Revenge is doing. See, it's doing 400,000 damage. Now, now Therian's Fury is comparatively not really as strong because Revenge is better, right? So that makes Naltharian's Fury by default not really as good, but I think it's still obviously worth using in AoE situations, especially for scales of the earth, depending on how many mobs you're fighting, especially if they're cast or especially if they're melee. But Revenge for me right now, especially because I have the talent and everything, is doing more damage with a non-crit than it's basically about the same amount of damage as a non-crit as it's doing with a crit on live servers right now. So Revenge is doing a huge amount of damage. As you can see, my damage meter, I'm going to do the exact same pull, and I'm going to be doing somewhere around like 20 to 30% more damage um, on a PTR in this AoE pull than I am doing on, uh, on live servers. But the offset for that is that Warriors are not really going to be as strong as single target. Now, personally, how is this really going to change Warriors? How is this going to modify them? I think it's going to make Warriors much better in Mythic Plus. Obviously, it's going to make them a lot better in Mythic Plus. And also, I think it's going to make them maybe slightly weaker in terms of rating and single target situations. Warriors, I think, have had a very kind of good spot in Legion. That's why I've been playing Prot so much. Because they have very, very high survivability. They have very, very good mobility. And they didn't really have good... Uh, AoE damage, but they did make up for that with moderately good single target damage while at the same time being able to do uh, a couple of other things really well uh, also. So now they're kind of replacing that uh, the single target damage that they had with a little bit of, uh, of AoE damage, which is good for me. I always really like doing AoE pulls, so that's cool. My main content that I tank is Mythic Plus, so as somebody who does that, I'm actually very excited to see these changes happening. However, for somebody who is a raid tank, I can see this being extremely frustrating 
frustrating and annoying. This is myself on the live servers, and I'm also like I've got my other. I think I have my other trinkets on. This is my actual like my build for tanking, right? So this is my maximum damage build for tanking and mythic plus. And I was not even. I think I wasn't really itemized for that on the PTR anyway. So I uh, take that into consideration as well. So for me personally, I think that these changes are great. I like them a lot, but I can see a lot of people who are raid tanks and are serious players with like, you know, mythic plus progression tanking, very concerned with the way that focus rage is being taken away. And focus rage also gave you a defensive damage, not defensive damage, it's kind of redundant, but a defensive increase as well as ultimatum doing that for you as well by giving you free focus rages because in patch 7.1, the focus rages that you got through ultimatum actually did trigger vengeance. So Prot warriors are using losing a lot of I, I guess like not so noticeable survivability, but for somebody who knows a lot about prot warriors and has played them a lot, much more so than myself, I, I can see this being a very very frustrating situation. Hopefully, Blizzard listens to their feedback and does at least something. I, I honestly feel like the prot warrior AOE damage. Like I don't want to say this right, but it's fucking ridiculous, man. Like this this is insane. Like, how are you going to be doing 400k every two seconds to every mob and also, like, that doesn't even cost any resources? Like, it's fucking insane. Like, I, I honestly think that's going to get nerfed. But if it doesn't, I'll be very surprised and I'll also be very happy. But I don't necessarily think it's good for balance of the game, if that makes sense. And also, you guys can see my damage breakdown. Uh, whenever I was doing this on the uh, on PTR, Revenge was about 50% of my damage and on Live, it was not even 40 so it does make a really, really big difference. Now, also, I do feel like they should take a little bit of the damage that warriors are getting from AoE and put a little bit more of that back into their single target damage because it's going to be very frustrating for people to only be good in AoE situations because all tanks are relatively good in AoE situations, so warriors are just going to be a little bit better. So whenever they're doing single target damage, it's going to be kind of, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of frustrating. And also it's going to affect PVP. You're not going to be able to do as much damage in PVP. And on top of that, you've got just world questing and stuff like that. If you're trying to kill like one mob, it's going to take a lot longer. So there are going to be a lot of effects that are going to come out of this. that could be kind of unpleasant for a lot of people who play prompt warriors. Anyway, guys, final verdict. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Uh, the changes are really big. Usually I would expect to see these changes in a big patch, if not an expansion, but this is just a mini patch and it's happening. So we'll see what happens, but go ahead and let me, let me know what you guys think. I'm kind of curious. Uh, you know, I play prod a lot, but I'm not like a main prod warrior. So I'd be curious to hear what some people said to have to say that are actually like they main prod warriors and they've been playing it the whole time and raid tanking everything. What do you guys think about these changes? I'm kind of curious and I still don't have my mind completely made up, but anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching and like comments and subscribe.